also uh, things that we're seeing happening in this nation. Uh, we get a lot of calls and emails about what is God's perspective about different topics uh, and also from things that are going on in the YouTube. So I want to take this opportunity to invite you to the program today. And on our broadcast today, we're going to be talking about the Shekinah glory of God. So the topic today is the Shekinah glory versus the tongues of fire. And the reason why we're talking about this is because I had someone call the ministry and ask a question. He said uh, uh, there was a prophet out there, uh, you know, on the YouTube. And um, a lot of you know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to give names here. Uh, but they say that there was a prophet out there on the YouTube. Uh, who is claiming uh, that there's a glory cloud that came to his meeting and is traveling all over the place telling everybody about how the Shekinah glory of the Old Testament uh, came to his meeting and there's no any other meeting other than you know his meetings where the Lord has come to uh, endorse you know um, whatever his activities and whatever he's doing so someone uh, called us and asked what is the Bible perspective on on these things because we can go by what everybody says we we can't go by um, the stuff that is floating in the sky we can't go by uh, you know the clouds that people are looking at and manifestations all right we can't look at manifestation we got to go back to the Bible and find uh, what's the relevance of the Shekinah glory in the New Testament it's also important to talk about it because we know that Jesus gives us a warning in Matthew 24 verses 24 he says the greatest deception in this last days um, is going to come through a false prophet I'm not saying the guy in, in the topic is a, is a false prophet but I'm just saying Jesus said in Matthew 24 verses 24 uh, that there shall rise false Christ and false prophets and and they shall show great signs and wonders all right so Jesus is saying uh, the, the deception of the last days is gonna come with great signs and wonders all right so it's not just some fake signs eh? Jesus is saying that the false prophets shall show great signs and wonders in 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 as much that if it was possible even the elect of God will be deceived. Even the people that are so disciplined in their walk with God will be dis will be deceived by all these great signs and wonders. That's why I'm I'm always the advocate of forget forget the manifestation, consecrate co you know con spend time on consecration and sanctification, uh, spend time on um, the cross and the blood of Jesus. Uh, if you spend time on the cross and the blood of Jesus, sanctification, consecration, dying to self and living holy, the glory will come. All right. So Jesus is warning, let us not be looking at the sky for signs and wonders and all those things, because those will be the muck of deception by the false prophets. Okay. They will come with great signs and wonders. So I wanted to put that scripture out there so that when we're getting into this, we have a foundation of what we're talking about. All right, so what was the significance of the Shekinah glory of Jehovah uh, God um, in, in the Old Testament or even today? All right, what was the prophetic significance of this manifestation of God? All right, so the word Shekinah means God caused to dwell. All right, God has caused, he has caused to dwell. It's also significant, it, it, it is also significant as we are looking at it is also significant that we understand that it was a divine visitation of the presence okay or the dwelling of Jehovah God on earth all right on the Old Testament all right so let's not get it mixed up or twisted up all right so it signified or it, the significance of it was that it was the divine visitation of the presence of Jehovah God on earth all right so we don't find the word Shekinah, you know, in the Bible anywhere. All right. That word Shekinah is not in the Bible. In the biblical text, you can't find it. So, but it's, it, you know, the word is derived from the word um, Shekan. Oh, okay. It's the word Shekan. We get it from the word Shekan. And um, whoever was using the word Shekinah 
you know, just coined the word from the noun form, uh, from the verbal forms used to describe abiding or dwelling, all right, or habitation, or the physical manifestations of Jehovah that are described in Exodus 24, verses 16, also in Exodus chapter 40, verses 35. And also we see Numbers chapter 9, verses 17. So just giving you those scriptures so that you can look through them. Again, Exodus 24, 16, Exodus 40, 35, and Numbers chapter 9, verses 17. So the word Shekinah is also used to describe, the word Shekan is also used to describe the presence, the tabernacle, okay, the presence that came upon the tabernacle. In the ladder, all right, and ladder, you know, it, it, it is the first second temple okay uh so we're finding the word shikan all right where we are deriving the word shikiner but then also we have the word mishkan all right and you know which a is a you know is a derivation of the word shikan okay so it's you know the, the word shikan it is translated to mean the tabernacle or their dwelling place all right so you get the Hebrew word Shekan and you see a dwelling, a habitation, a place to dwell in. All right. So, and the tabernacle, the, the Hebrew word for the tabernacle is simply Ohel. All right. Ohel or the tent of meeting. So we have the Shekan descending upon the Ohel, which means the dwelling place of God. That is the place of him who dwells. All right, so it's important for us to get that foundation before we get further in this. But I want to say clearly that in the New Testament, we don't see anybody running around looking for clouds in the sky or genie in a bottle. All right, nobody's running around trying to look for you know, clouds and fires and, and things that are floating up in space. We are not told to do that. We are not told to worship those stuff. We are not told to spend time talking about it. We should spend time talking about Jesus and Him crucified. All right, so the Shekinah was first evident when the Israelites set out from Sukkoth, okay, in their escape from Egypt, all right? It, you know, the, the glory or the Shekinah glory appeared as a cloudy pillar in the day and also a fiery pillar by night, all right? So after leaving Sukkoth, they encamped at Etham on the edge of the desert. So by the day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud, to guide them on their way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so let let us understand the perspective the significance the importance of the glory of God as it appeared to them in the wilderness in the desert number one we are told that the glory appeared to them at the edge of the desert but the day the Lord went ahead of them as a cloud all right to guide them so the purpose for the Shekinah glory was to guide the people all right to guide them on their way by night all right and in, in at night it came like a pillar of fire for what reasons to illuminate the path all right to illuminate their path so that they don't you know um walk on a wrong path but then also to guide and lead them so they could travel by day or night neither the pillar or cloud by day or by the pillar of, of fire by night left its place the front of the people that's exodus chapter 13 from verses 20 to 22. so we see the sole purpose of God manifesting his presence to the children of Israel in the wilderness is for one reason only all right we are seeing it right here all right that he Jehovah he manifests his presence to them to guide them to lead them and to illuminate the path for the people so we can see that the clouds roll was basically to guide them and illuminate their way all right but do we need in the New Testament the cloud to come again and illuminate our paths? Do we still need some fire descending from heaven and, and some kind of cloud coming down to guide us? No, we don't. And let me tell you why. Because, all right, the Shekinah glory descended like a cloud, like a pillar of fire in the Old Testament, but at Pentecost, the glory of Jesus through the Holy Spirit descended upon the sacrifices that were meeting on the upper room. Listen, the disciples were the sacrifice in the upper room. Every time the sacrifice is laid on the altar, 
and it's a right sacrifice god sent the fire and so the disciples were actually the meat on the altar in the upper room and the fire came and endorsed the sacrifice all right we didn't see no cloud coming all right if the cloud was still supposed to come and we are supposed to expect some shekinah glory to come from heaven listen the disciples on pentecost day they should have experienced it all right people should have seen some cloud coming over there all right and people should have seen probably at river jordan when jesus was being baptized maybe the cloud could have come but nobody talks about it and even on pentecost nobody talks about the shekinah glory cloud coming upon the mighty meeting those being held in the upper room so we see the, the the role was to lead and to guide them in the old testament but in the new testament the holy spirit is is the one guiding and leading us i'm going to read this scripture right now john chapter 16 verses 13 but when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truths all right he will not speak on his own he will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what to come so in the old testament the shekinah glory cloud came and the pillar of fire came to guide and lead them in john 16 13 we are told in the new testament the spirit of god comes to guide us into all truth all right so we see the holy spirit has replaced the shekinah glory cloud all right it came evidence like tongues of fire that rested upon the disciples for god who said let there be light in darkness all right second corinthians chapter 4 verse 6 says that for the god who said let there be light in darkness has made this light shine in our hearts so that we know the glory of god that is seen in the face of jesus all right so we are told that the light that the children of israel were receiving from the shekinah glory now that light has is shining in our hearts all right it is shining in our hearts because we know the glory of god that is in the face of jesus so now the shekinah glory is no longer in some cloud all right but it's like a light that is shining in our hearts and that very glory of god that descended upon them now it's on the face of jesus so when we are seeking the face of jesus what we're seeking is the glory of god we are seeking the shekinah glory to come upon our hearts now god spoke to moses out of the pillar of a cloud all right in exodus 33 assuring him that his presence will be with the israelites verses 11 god says to moses and god speaks to moses face to face out of the cloud all right but when moses asked to see the glory of god god told him you cannot see my face which means you cannot see my shekinah you cannot see shekan all right for no man can see the shekan and leave. So apparently, in this place, in this scripture, the visible manifestation of the glory of God was muted by God. All right, God's telling Moses, you can't see my glory. And he took Moses and hid Moses on a cleft of...